So, whatever it is that you're offering, we're not into it. Don't care. Couldn't care less. <laughs> mean when Mormons show up at my house. Find the stones. Bring them to me. What will you do? Wait. Thanos is so lazy. I grew up with him. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's your girl, Tofu. <laughs> Today we will be reacting to Avengers Endgame for the very first time since its release in April. This movie has a lot of personal meaning to me. I honestly feel like I have grown up with all of the Marvel movies and I remember being 14 years old. I went to the theaters to see Avengers with my dad and we saw it twice in one day because I loved it so much. This sounds really dumb but like the Marvel series is something that I started with my dad and that I finished with my partner. It's been such a big thing for me to share with the most important men I have in my life and it just it means a lot to me. <laughs> Every single movie in the MCU besides maybe the um the Hulk ones like it represents like a pretty big chunk of time for me and like a time period of my life. So this just has a lot of personal meaning, you guys, and I wanted to share this experience with you and just watch it for the very first time since its release. Let's get into it. Yeah. Oh, Hawkeye and his family. I feel like Hawkeye is just like an underrated character and he never really has had like a whole lot of moments to shine as a character unless it's with like Natasha. I know we had the moment with his family in Age of Ultron but I feel like he never gets like a whole lot of moments and like he's never gotten his own movie or anything so I really like this entire scene. I mean except for like the fact that it just ends really poorly but, but I really like that it's with Hawkeye and his family and it shows that they have just such a beautiful life and a beautiful family and you can see the implications of what happened in Infinity War and their effect on like kind of normal everyday people. I mean Hawkeye isn't like normal every day but like in this context he is. Like we see the effect that it has on um, Captain America and Tony Stark and like everyone else in Infinity War but I don't think any any other scene demonstrates what happened quite as well as this. I just think it's really really well done. Let's continue. Hey you guys want mayo or mustard? Mayo or mustard? How about ketchup? She's so cute. Now let's go. There she was. I was about to say there she is, but there she was. What? I don't want to cry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to almost cry. It's just that Hawkeye's given up like a lot and he sacrificed a lot so that he could have a family so that he could be with them like this. Like that's why he hasn't been in some of the other fights so that he could be with his family and like the feeling I got in theater when I first watched that, like your heart just drops. Oh, I cannot cry. I spent too long on my eyeshadow to cry. Yeah, that was close. That's a goal. We are now one apiece. I would like to try again. It's fun. And you've won. <laughs> the way she reacted to it was just so cute. Congratulations. Good sport. You have fun? It was fun. I think Nebula is like a really interesting character, like especially in that scene, like I think she's just a child who's been abused, sort of. I think it's really interesting that she probably doesn't really have a concept of what fun is or feeling like she's won or getting validation from someone that she beat. Like Gamora never really like offered her that until like way later and even then. And like she definitely never got that from Thanos. So like that entire scene with Tony like was just really sweet. Hey Miss Potts, if you find this recording, don't post it on social media. It's gonna be a real tearjerker. The infection's run its course thanks to the blue meanie back there. You love her only a tiny bit sadistic. <laughs> I know that this movie was just like already so long, but I just really wish that I could have gotten like a five hour version of this movie. Like I would have loved like just even a half an hour of just Nebula and Tony and their interactions and then and them just working on things together and tinkering with stuff and like trying to figure out how they're gonna make this work when they know that they're not going to be able to. Like I really wish I could have seen more of that in this movie, but I know that logistically it just wasn't possible. I just really like the dynamic between them. And I just know that I would have had a lot of fun with just sitting for half an hour watching them do random ass shit, you know? But like, I know it, I know it wasn't possible. It's a really pretty shot right there. Blueberries. Oh. Pep, I know I said no more surprises. I was really hoping to pull off one last one. Don't feel bad about this. I mean, actually, if you grovel for a couple weeks and then move on with enormous guilt. 
Please know when I drift off, I drink about you. Cause it's always you. I need to stop feeling all these feelings. This music, it's the same music at the very end of the film. I didn't notice that before. I'm not gonna be in two mess for the entire three hours of this film. <laughs> a tender moment between Nebula and Tony right there. See, I just like want, I want more of that, you know. I just basically, what I will say for this entire reaction is I just want, I just wanted a six hour version of this movie. Like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Captain Marvel being the solution to Tony and Nebula being stuck out in space just seemed weird to me. It just, it felt off, but like, I understand we got to get them back so that we could continue the rest of the movie, but like, I, but I think it would have been really, really cool if Rocket and his ship could have brought them back. I know that they, I think Rocket was looking for them, but like, I, I think I would have preferred Rocket bringing them back because just, because we know Rocket a little bit better. This just seemed too convenient, too easy. But I understand they gotta, they gotta get this movie going. There's a lot we need to get through in three hours. It's somehow been, oh, 15 minutes and I am eight minutes into the film. <laughs> I need to stop talking and we need to get through this movie. <laughs> Product placement! I use that same razor! Uh-uh, that can't be good. Pepper! Admittedly, Captain Marvel's pretty damn badass. Look at her just glowing, like... I don't like you, but you go, girl. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's okay. What's wrong with him? Uh, he's pissed. He thinks he failed. Which, of course, he did, but, you know, there's a lot of that going around. <laughs> Okay. Honestly, until this exact second, I thought you were Build-A-Bear. Maybe I am. <laughs> Did he give you any clues? If it's anything. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of heartbreaking to see Tony like this. Like, just in terms of stature, like, Tony's never been, like, Thor big, you know, or, like, Captain America big. But he's always had this personality that's just enormous and, like, lights up a room. He just has so much charisma and life. And it's just, it's almost heartbreaking to see him, like, this frail and this defeated and I think they did really excellent work on the CG here to make him look that like small and I actually think that Robert's acting here like further gives you the impression that it, it's he's smaller now he it's not only he looks smaller like he feels smaller too I needed you as in past tense that trumps what you need it's, you know what I need I need to shave it scared me I said we'd lose you said we'll do that together too you weren't there for you, Cap. I got no coordinates, no trust. Fire. Tony, it's fine. Real quick, I just want to say that, again, Robert's acting right there. You can just really see the hurt in his eyes and his entire demeanor when he's talking to Steve. And it just brings up all of the feelings from Captain America Civil War. The feelings that were just kind of like unresolved, all that tension, all that hurt, the anguish, the feeling of betrayal and abandonment and I think all of that just really came through so well in that scene. <laughs> this movie is so good! Where are you going? To kill Thanos. <laughs> Their look right there. Where would we go once this plan was complete? To the garden. That's cute. <laughs> Thanos has a retirement plan. <laughs> Let's go get this son of a bitch. We stand a swearing Steve! Protein jump in three! I thought she said protein jump. I was so confused. I think that's such a pretty shot right there with his eyes. Oh, I just think that's so good. It just cracks me up. He's just making a stew. I am inevitable. No, you're just kind of a dick. <laughs> Satisfying, yet scarring. <laughs> Five years later. So I uh, went on a date the other day. It's first time in five years. I mean, he, he cried as they were serving the salads. What about you? And I cried just before dessert. <laughs> I don't know why that line is so funny to me. But I'm seeing them again tomorrow. It's great. You did the hardest part. You took the jump. You didn't know where you were going to come down. First of all, like, it's kind of weird to see, you know, Captain Steve Rogers just kind of be, like, reduced to, like, kind of like a counselor or, like, um, a meeting leader. Like, it's, it's weird for us to look at it, I think. But I don't think it's weird for him, especially like after five years, he's been able to adjust a little bit. But at the end of the day, like Steve Rogers is Steve Rogers. Like he wants to help people, right? And well, and sometimes that requires a fight and sometimes it requires him sitting down counselor style and helping people get through grief. And I just think that he wants to be where he's needed. It doesn't matter 
if it's prestigious or he's had so many important roles and he just sees this one as just the same. It's just as important as the rest of them and it just really reinforces to me that Steve is just such a pure person and he's just like a good man, you know. Sorry, I'm like talking so much. I can hear the angry comments already. They're like, you're talking too much. You're not even reacting. But like, I've seen it. Like, I, I don't have like reactions. I, I have commentary to offer. I have things that I want to talk to you guys about. So I'm sorry that like, this isn't going to be like a straight reaction. There's so many things that I'm noticing now that I didn't notice then. And there's just like so many things that I did want to tell you guys about that I wasn't able to then because it was in theaters and not on DVD. So let's go. Let's just continue. The rat. The real MVP of the MCU is the rat. Oh. I just love his character. <laughs> Real quick, one of my favorite things about Infinity War and about Avengers Endgame is how there's this enormous cast, but they manage to still remain faithful to like the tone of the character of each individual character and their the kind of the tone of their movie if they had one. Like overall, I think Avengers Endgame is a very serious movie, but there's just these moments with a character like with with Rhodey or with Ant Man. Like they're still them. They're still the characters, and I just think it was a tremendous feat for the directors and everyone else who worked on these movies to to keep each character so separate, very recognizable in their own style from their own movies or their own moments, you know? I did not explain things well at all. Hey, kid! What the hell happened here? Oh my God. Please, please, no, Cassie. What? <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? Like, I think that was like the real moment where it dawned on him, he's like, how long have I been fucking gone? Like, because the kid didn't answer. And he, it only like just occurred to me now, like how confused he must be like on the inside. He just pops up in a garage and he leaves the garage and the entire world is different. But like, it's just time passed so differently for him. Like, it just now occurred to me like how fucking like confused and worried he is. Like, just... <laughs> You're so big. <laughs> Although it doesn't ruin it for me, it does bother me a little bit that she seems a little bit too old to be his daughter. <laughs> like five years doesn't really do that. <laughs> like she was she was a small girl and then she looks like she's 25. Um, like that still doesn't ruin the moment for me. Like it's still a really nice moment. You boarded that highly suspect. I love her hair like this. I love it. Like I hated her hair and her eyebrows in Infinity War and I just, I loved her hair in this movie. Do we have a visual? How are we handling it? It's an earthquake <laughs> under the ocean. We handle it by not <laughs> handling it. I love her response there. Although realistically, in five years, Black Widow's hair should have grown out a lot more than that, but... Okay. The uh, Federales found a room full of bodies. It's definitely Barton. I mean, the scene that he left. I gotta tell you, there's a part of me that doesn't even want to find him. Will you find out where he's going next? Nat? Please. Tasha. You know, I'd offer to cook you dinner, but you seem pretty miserable already. He immediately cheers her up just a little bit with that remark. I used to have nothing, and then I got this. This family, and I was always better because of it. And even though they're gone, I'm still trying to be better. I think we both need to get a line. You first. Scott, I feel so sorry for him. Look at him. Have either of you guys ever studied quantum physics? Only to make conversation. <laughs> Are you talking about a time machine? No, of course not. No, not a time machine. This is more like a, yeah, <laughs> like a time machine. <laughs> Morgan H. Stark, you want some lunch? Define lunch or be the okay. <gasps> She's so cute. How did you, look at this. Garage. Really? Were you looking for it? No, I found it though. Mm. <laughs> it's fine actually. Mom never wears anything I buy her. <laughs> He's like, God damn it, <laughs> what are they doing here? <laughs> he just walks away. We can snap our own fingers, we can bring everybody back. Or screw it up worse than he already has, right? I don't believe we would. I've gotta say it, I sometimes miss that giddy optimism. I believe the most likely outcome will be our collective demise. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. Mommy told me to come and save you. Oh. <laughs> I'm safe. Oh. We need it, what are we gonna stop? No, I wanna do it right. We're gonna need a really big brain. Time for plan B. <laughs> I'm so confused. These are confusing times. <laughs> right, no, no. For years, I've been treating the Hulk like he's some kind of disease, something to get rid of. But then I start looking at him as the cure. I put the brains and the brawn together. 
there's just something really beautiful about that to me, like the acceptance when you accept sometimes the more messy parts of yourself, sometimes they can be really beautiful. I just think that's really nice. Excuse me, Mr. Holt? Yes. Can we can we get a photo? Do you want to grab one with me? I'm Ant-Man. <laughs> ah, this I makes me feel so physically right awkward. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting like secondhand through the screen awkwardness vibe. The cringe. Take the goddamn phone. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Bruce. Listen to your mom. <laughs> Seeing Tony Stark do dishes like a stay-at-home dad is just like the best thing about this entire movie. <laughs> One last sim before we pack it in for the night. And don't worry if it doesn't pan out, I'm just kind of... Model rendered. Shit! <laughs> we don't say that. Only mommy says that word. She coined it. It belongs to her. Why are you up? Because I got some important shit going on here. Ah. What do you think? I got something on my mind. Wait, the taste pops? Great minds think alike. Mm -hmm. Juice pops. <laughs> exactly. Face goes there. Tell me story. The story. Uh, once upon a time, we're going to wait to bed at the end. That is a terrible story. <laughs> Come on. That reminds me in like God of War, like Kratos telling Atreus stories. <laughs> once upon a time, there was a girl and she went to bed. <laughs> like, that's just, it just reminds me of God of War right there. Love you tons. I love you 3,000. 3,000. That's crazy. Go to bed or I'll sell all your toys. <laughs> Not that it's a competition, but she loves me 3,000. You were somewhere in the low six to 900 branch. <laughs> what you reading? Just a book on composting. What's new with composting? <laughs> Interesting science. I figured it out, <laughs> by the way. You know, just so we're talking about the same thing. Time travel. I can put a pin in it right now and stop. Tony, trying to get you to stop has been one of the few failures of my entire life. Something tells me I should put it in a lock box and drop it to the bottom of the lake and go to bed. But would you be able to rest? I really like that entire scene because I think it's that perfectly encapsulates Tony and Pepper and their relationship. Like, she doesn't want him to go. She doesn't want him to do it. She, she wants him to put it away, but she also knows him. And she puts herself and her needs aside and she's like well we had five great years go off and do what you need to do honey like if pepper isn't like the ideal example of what a perfect supportive spouse looks like i don't know what is like uh, how can you be more supportive than that like knowing that he's leaving again you know he's leaving he's gonna put himself into danger he's he's gone like he's going to the avengers compound he's gonna be working through this issue he's gonna be working with the the remaining avengers you know like you can just see like she's accepted that about him and that's like as much as she hates it, it's also something i think that she really loves about him it feels like tony's like out of practice with using a car and it's just really funny let me guess he turned into a baby it's the epr paradox it's tricky dangerous somebody could have cautioned you against him you did oh did i well thank god i'm <laughs> These movies just would not be the same without Iron Man, would they? I just want peace. Throw back to Iron Man 2, right? That handshake seemed to have said so much more than which was actually being said. There was forgiveness, there was letting go of stuff, there was moving past things, which is so weird because they were just like shaking hands, not really talking, looking at each other, but like they just, they just seem to have said so much in those moments and I Chris and Robert and the way that they did that scene was just so perfect because it really just did seem like they were they were saying so much more than they were actually saying and I think it just came across really flawlessly <laughs> the stuffed animal on there Tony I don't know Mark I made it for you plus honestly I have to get out of the garage before Morgan takes it sledding <laughs> I really like that they just always have kept Captain America's theme song in there even with even if it's just a few notes, like you can always hear like those horns or whatever, like you can hear his theme in the background of the score. And I just wanted to take a moment and appreciate that. Ah, oh, the tacos. Oh my God, I'm so hungry right now. It's been like an hour and a half. <laughs> Me sitting here talking way too much. <laughs> this is me. Hey, Brody, careful on re-entry. There's an idiot in the landing zone. Oh God. What's up, regular size man? <laughs> so wholesome. This music is cracking. Great to see you, angry girl. She's like, what the fuck? 
Oh my god, it's so good to see you. Cuddly little rascal. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm good, I'm good. Me from Cole, right? Hey, hey boys. guys. <laughs> I love those characters. That kid on the TV just called me a dickhead again. I love how pop culture has just like stayed completely consistent in five years. Like there's still Dap, there's still Fortnite. Like, I'm not sure if I'm surprised or disappointed. <laughs> Noob Master, hey, it's Thor again. Rip off your arms and shove them up your butt. Let's right? <laughs> go cry to your father, you little weasel. Weasel. You all right? Yes, I'm fine, why? There might be a chance we could fix everything. Like Thanos. Don't you say that. Although I don't really like how many jokes were ultimately made at Thor's expense because his body changed. In general, I do really like how they handled like depression and anxiety in this, especially after like a traumatic experience. I like to see Thor, this god, this fun, sort of optimistic, funny, strong, huge, perfect guy kind of to see his body change and to see his persona, his identity change, especially compared to like Ragnarok. I think that's actually, I think that's really huge. That was a poor choice of words. <laughs> I think it's meaningful and I like how they showed that depression and anxiety can affect anyone for any reason. I mean, granted in Thor's case, like depression and anxiety probably isn't like hardwired into him like it could be for some of us, but like with a traumatic event, like it's still, it's still affecting him. Like he's still living with it. And like, he's trying to put on a brave face and you can see that, but like it still hurts him five years. I mean, it's one thing to see like five years on the screen in front of you five years later, but like five years is a huge chunk of time. I mean, if you're 50, 70, however old you are, five years is a long time. Five years ago, I was in high school. Now I'm going to graduate college in a year. Like the growth that happens in five years is insane. And the fact that like, he's still not over this, that all of these people are still not over this just is a testament to how deeply impacted they are by it and their entire world like not just them but i think it's really important to keep in perspective how long five years is you know i got off track but let's continue you're in a rough spot okay i've been there myself and you want to know who helped me out of it <clears throat> natasha <laughs> so whatever it is that you're offering we're not into it. Don't care. Couldn't care less. <laughs> mean when Mormons show up at my house. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm serious. You shouldn't be here. Neither should you. Killing all these people isn't going to bring your family back. We found something. A chance. Maybe. His face right there. His face right there. Don't give me hope. Sorry I couldn't give it to you sooner. Ratchet, how's it going? Ratchet. <laughs> His sleeve just looks so cool. If we can do this, go back in time, why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know, and... If you travel to the past, past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. That will never make sense to me, and that's okay. I've accepted it. I will never understand time travel. In other movies, in this movie, I will just never understand it. Where are my well? headphones? Lila! Lila! Even the thought of imagining Caleb disappearing for five years and then I hear his voice like, oh, no, imagine it. Like the person you love most in the world or the people that you love most in the world, they disappear for five years and then all of a sudden you hear their voices like, I can't, I can't. The music, the music. Almost everyone in this room has had an encounter with at least one of the six Infinity Stones. I haven't, but I don't even know what the hell you're all talking about. Poor Scott. <laughs> Let's start with the ether. Thor, what do you know? <laughs> Is he asleep? No, no. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Thanos found the soul stone on Vormir. What is Vormir? For the longest time, when they would say Vormir before I got subtitles on Infinity War, I thought they were saying Boromir, and I was just so confused. Guys, if you pick the right year, there are three stones in New York. Shut the front door. <laughs> I like how they all just look like a bunch of college students, like during finals week right there. I just love that so much. The music. The music. You know your teams, you know your missions. Such a cool moment. Such a cool moment. That moment is seriously so cool. Oh my god, I love this. I love this part. I love this part. I love this part. The thing I've always wondered about all these sequences is how much of it is recreated and how much of it is like from old movies. I think this exact scene is from Avengers, but how much of 
the other stuff did they have to recreate versus how much did they have on like b-roll or whatever from previous movies that they had just lying around or did they have to recreate like a lot of this except this iconic scene you know like that's something like i i need to know <laughs> <laughs> He's just so bad at it now, and I love it. I'd be careful going that way, we just had the floors waxed. It's just really nice to see her again. Like, I just, I always really liked her character. She was kind of weird, and I just, I liked it. I'm looking for Dr. Strange. You're about five years too early. Stephen Strange is currently performing surgery about 20 blocks that way. What do you want from him? That, actually. I'm afraid not. So cool. Let's start over, shall we? <laughs> Like, this was such a trash movie, honestly. Like, Thor The Dark World, trash. Absolute trash. But, like, there's still, like, a soft spot in my heart for it because, like, Thor movies, I don't know, something about them just fucking gets to me. Are you crying? <laughs> me. No. Yes. <laughs> Definitely me. <laughs> me throughout this entire movie. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Get that stone and come back. No messing around. Uh, that hurt. Coordinates for Vormir are laid in. All they have to do is not fall out. Maybe not fall out, but someone's definitely gonna fall down. <laughs> Net. <laughs> a long way from Budapest. <laughs> We're not the only ones in 2014 looking for the stones. So who else is looking for these stones? My father, my sister, and me. And you? I mean, you could have mentioned that before, Nebula. Gamora. <laughs> she just looked like a, a child right there, just like throwing a little bit of a tantrum. It's funny. Father's plan is finally in motion. Well, speak of the devil. I wonder who that could be. Oh, would you look at that? Ronan's obsession clouds his judgment. I mean, your judgment isn't great either, sir, to be honest. I'll not fail you, father. No, you won't. I will make you proud. 2014 Nebula. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I hate watching this, it's so painful. All right, flick me. What do you think? Maximum occupancy has been reached. Take the stairs. Yes. Yeah. Take the stairs. Take the stairs. Me. <laughs> Definitely me. Hulk is just such a mood all the time. <laughs> Can we focus, please? I'm going inside you. I'm going inside you. <laughs> I forgot how funny this movie was. Like, when I sat down to watch this, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be like a super serious, like, heavy movie. And I just, I forgot how much fun it was, you know? You promise me you won't die? You're only giving me a mild cardiac dysrhythmia. Here it goes! <laughs> Medic! Medic! <laughs> you got some help! <laughs> I just want to take this moment, just one little moment to appreciate how much I just love the scenes with Ant-Man where he's small, like, cinematically they're just so good looking. Those scenes are so good. <laughs> Quick slice. Made me jump a little bit. God damn it. <laughs> I have eyes on Loki, 14th floor. Such a great explanation for it though, like, Loki, yeah, great explanation for it, I must admit. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Bucky is alive! It's like, it's moments like these that really fuck with me trying to understand the whole time travel thing and how it's supposed to work in this film. Like, I will, I will never understand it. Like, I, I know they're supposed to, like, return, like, the Infinity Stones and everything, but, like, how, 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 how is that gonna affect, like, this timelines version of Captain America Winter Soldier and like y you know like I will never understand how time travel works in this but like the movie's so enjoyable I almost don't care that is America's ass I love that part so much he just has a sun hat on him see even this explanation that they're about to do right here isn't gonna help me understand the, the whole time travel thing like I will never understand it. We can return each one to its own timeline. It never left. Mm, still, I still can... I still will never be able to understand it. Like, because even if they return them at the same exact moment, that means nothing's, like, really changed in those realities, right? Like, Thanos is still gonna get them, right? Like, am I the only one who is still able to enjoy the story, but, like, cannot, for the life of them, understand how this time travel thing is supposed to work, in theory, you know? Like, this explanation helps me, like, zero. It's the duty of the Sorcerer Supreme to protect the Time Stone. 
Is it just me or does Sorcerer Supreme just sounds like something you'd eat at Taco Bell? I know it just must be like really close to my mind because I just ate a Taco Bell burrito, but like every time I hear Sorcerer Supreme, I'm like, Taco Bell. <laughs> and why the hell did Strange give it away? What did he say? He gave it to Thanos. Willingly? Yes. Why? I have no idea. Maybe he made a mistake. Wait, okay, so now I'm confused about this. Like, if she can see five years into the future, why can't she see that Doctor Strange would give the stone to Thanos. Oh wait, no, now I think I have an explanation for that. She can't see past her own death, right? Maybe like that? Cause she's like a Sorcerer Supreme right now, but like she will be able to see when she dies, but maybe she can't see past her own death. So past Doctor Strange, maybe she can't see anything after that. She can see up until five years and then she like dies, but then she can't see past that. Okay, maybe, maybe that's an explanation. I don't know, I just can't, I just can't keep thinking about it. I'll just confuse myself more. <laughs> I was just earning that. It's an idiot with an axe. You're no idiot. A failure? Absolutely. Oh. It's a little bit harsh. Everyone fails at who they're supposed to be for. The measure of a person, of a, a hero, is how well they succeed at being who they are. Now you go and be the man you're meant to be. I love you, Mom. I love you. I'm so glad that they got that moment. He got a moment to say goodbye to her. So he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember if Nebula has pain sensors. <laughs> I'm good. I am inevitable. inevitable. Fuck you. Mr. Stark, I'm being beamed up. Sorry, buddy. We got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> a problem. A minor inconvenience. You're repeating yourself. You're repeating yourself. You're repeating yourself. Dude. You know what are you talking about? What are we where are we going? I know for a fact that you're there. Who's there? What, what am I doing? I know. No one ever tells them anything. <laughs> What's in New Jersey? Zero four zero four seven. Excuse me. Nine seven nine. <laughs> I like how they still didn't tell Scott anything. They just left. <laughs> Not suspicious at all. <laughs> Need your briefcase? Yeah, kind of. It's kind of important. <laughs> uh, my wife's expecting. How far along is she? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if you guys haven't watched Agent Carter, it's on Hulu and it's really, it's really, really good actually. It's a good show. Actually, if this is the 70s, she should look like a little bit older, you know, like... A little bit older, but... I thought my dad was tough on me. Looking back on it, I just remember the good stuff. He did drop the odd pearl. Yeah? Like what? No amount of money ever bought a second of time. Smart guy. Did his best. That kid's not even here yet, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for him. That hurt. Thank you. <laughs> for everything. I love this continuity right here, guy? guys. That's Jarvis. He was also an Agent Carter. Wow. Under different circumstances, this would be totally awesome. Vormir is really beautiful. I just left like Alfheim in God of War, and Alfheim, when you first enter it, looks a lot like Vormir. How's it going? Mm. We don't get that stone. Billions of people stay dead. And I guess we both know who it's gotta be. I guess we do. The last five years, I've been trying to do one thing get to right here. No, don't you get all decent on me now. Natasha, you know what I've done. You know what I've become. Well, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. Maybe you should. You didn't. At first, like, I was really bent out of shape that they weren't more than friends. Like, in Age of Ultron, we discovered that, like, Hawkeye has a family and whatever, but, like, I just really appreciate their friendship and how close they are. And I actually really, really, really like that it's not romantic. It makes it somehow more, not necessarily more heartfelt, but there's something really, really genuine about it. You win. <laughs> tell my family I love them. <laughs> you tell them yourself. <laughs> Damn you. Sound like she almost said I love you right there. Let me go. Please no. Please. This is seriously so pretty though, like the world building is just stunning. So neat. Oh! <laughs> Rocket! Don't hesitate! Move your fingers together! Just move the fingers together! <laughs> Take your other hand and move them! Who decides?
decided- Oh, I like her nails. Who decided that you have to snap? Like, why can't you just, like, make a peace sign? Like, why do you gotta snap? Ah, oh, snap. No, oh, no, no, it's, it's okay. <gasps> For comforting him, it's so cute. I think it worked. Property damage. That Avengers facility probably costs so much money. Thanos, why? He doesn't have the use of his legs to help him push that down. Like, the strength in his upper body, like, Rhodes. You're just uh, he's insane. He is so cool. Oh, I love the lighting in this entire scene. Actually, kind of reminds me of something in, like, Hunger Games. Or, like, Mockingjay Part 2. Find the stones. Bring them to me. What will you do? Wait. Thanos is so lazy. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. No, I'd go back to you. <laughs> I will shred this universe down to its last atom, and then create a new one. A grateful universe. Born out of blood. They'll never know it, because you won't be alive to tell them. I actually think that Thanos was a lot more sympathetic in Infinity War than he is in this one. I guess 2014 Thanos is just not quite as reasonable quite as knowledgeable. I mean, isn't he like a titan or whatever or something like that? Like, I feel like four years shouldn't be a whole lot for him in terms of the personal growth, but he he was just a lot more sympathetic and you could see his point of view a lot more in Infinity War than you can in Endgame, which I think is really interesting. Oh, rocket. Oh, see, I love these Ant-Man moments where everything's tiny like the pencils. Doesn't this just like give you Hunger Games vibes? I get such Hunger Games vibes from these tunnels. Like, I don't know what it is. Those could be months, for all you know. Oh, hey, I know you. <laughs> he just gives it to her. Oh! <laughs> yes, 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 yes! The coolest moment! Might be the best moment in this entire movie is this. I knew it. This right here. Oh, the music right here. Oh, it's so cool. So epic. Yes. Kick his ass. Like, out of all the things that could have broken this shield, like, Thanos' sword is the thing that does it? Like, I don't understand how that shield is breaking. I guess Thanos is just that powerful, but like, I've never been able to understand, like, out of all the things, that's what breaks his shield in like, three slices? In all my years of conquest, it was never personal. But I'll tell you now what I'm about to do to your stubborn, annoying little planet. I'm gonna enjoy it. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Like, in Infinity War, Thanos seems so much more reasonable. He was just like, this is what needs to happen so that, like, this planet can thrive, you know? But in here, he's just like, I just want to kill all of you and I'm gonna like it. I, I must admit, I, I don't really like 2014 Thanos in Endgame. Like, I know he's a bad guy, but he just, he seemed real and human. Human who's making the wrong decisions, who's rationalizing them, who's sick, but he seemed human. And in this, he just, he seems like a generic villain. And I'm not sure if that was purposeful, if that was supposed to happen, like, but I, I am kind of disappointed with Thanos and Endgame because he just, he was better in Infinity War. That's just my opinion. Like, did this entire army have Pym particles? Like, I do not know where all, like how do, here, I know how his like ship thingy like got here, right? And like him, but like, what about the rest of the army? Like, how did they get here? You can't just like portal jump from 2014 to 2019. Like, where are your Pym particles, bro? On your left. <gasps> I love these long takes. These long takes give me such joy. Uh. 
Squishy. <laughs> Squish. <laughs> what are you doing? <sighs> Finally got that hug. Gamora? I love this moment. I thought I lost you. <laughs> this is the one? Your choices were him or a tree. We're on it, Cap. <sighs> that little moment between them right there, that's cute. This looks so cool. It's dead. I have to hotwire it. I like how like one of the things that depend on the fate of the universe is them hotwiring a car. Like, that's almost hilarious. Saya. Like, how can they see that far across the battlefield? You took everything Girl. from me. I don't even know who you are. You will. I love that all of the, like, magician sorcerers do that. They, like, protect everyone with a shield up ahead. Like, the oh, it's like a pancake, but a magical one over their heads, serving as an umbrella. Oh, I love this moment. Hi, I'm Peter Parker. <laughs> so cute. Hey, Peter Parker. You got something for me? I don't know how you're gonna get us through all of that. Don't worry. She's got help. I love that Pepper Potts is in this fight. Like, I think it's so cool. <laughs> Such a fun part. You were better in the last movie! This is Stark. Can you hear me? It's Peter. What? You did it, sir. You did it. I'm sorry. Tony. Hey. Look at me. We're gonna be okay. You can rest now. So I thought I'd probably better record a little greeting in the case of an untimely death on my part. <laughs> I mean, not that death at any time isn't untimely. This time travel thing that we're gonna try and pull off today has got me scratching my head about the survivability of it. Then again, that's the hero gig. Part of the journey is the end. What am I even tripping for? Everything's gonna work out. I love you 3,000. <laughs> I wish there was a way that I could let her know that we won. She knows. We both do. You hungry? Mm-hmm. What do you want? Cheeseburgers. You know, your dad likes cheeseburgers. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get you all the cheeseburgers you want. Okay. Don't do anything stupid till I get back. How can I? You're taking all the stupid with you. God bless you, buddy. It's gonna be okay, Buck. Go ahead. I don't mind Sam being Captain America, but I really, I really, really wish that this last moment with Steve would have been between Bucky and Steve. You want to tell me about her? No. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. <laughs> you finally got their dance. I really want to just thank you for experiencing this with me. I share some of the biggest things in my life with you guys, and this is something important that I wanted to share with you guys as well. So thank you guys so much for experiencing this with me, and until the next episode of whatever we're doing, I hope you guys have a great day.
拜拜。This movie has a lot of personal meaning to me. I I honestly feel like I honestly feel like I grew up with this series. <laughs> oh, you can see it right there. Um, that's Thor, the orange one, and then Loki's right here. You can't really see him. Can't either of you nap without some sort of problem? No, shh. I'm trying to watch a movie with your namesakes.